we will see some characteristics okay color and length of the flames so for uh, example uh, we have chosen the lpg flame so take a, a burner some uh, diameter so some radius r and uh, try to inject the fuel okay so for example uh, uh, the fuel flow rate can be in liters per hour volumetric flow rate can be liters per hour and uh, i fix a value say 2.7 liters per hour of the lpg is injected to this uh, port or the circular burner and uh, when you ignite this you get a flame like this as i increase the flow rate say 2.7 to 3.3 3.9 and 5.6 you see a increase in the flame light this is a visible flame and a visible flame length increases as the flow rate of the fuel is increased okay so this is the main characteristic so as i told you given uh, flow rate what is the length at which the uh, complete combustion of the things take place for example uh, this is the length that the flame height the tip of the flame indicates the point where it has found the fuel has found the enough oxygen to burn that is what the flame height indicates so the instantaneous photographs we can see some small oscillations may be there so when i take a photograph at a given time instant the flame uh, looks like this it's a jet diffusion flame that means only the lpg comes out of the nozzle or the port or in, in this case it's a circular pipe only lpg comes out of that and it uh, due to the momentum it entrains air from the atmosphere and uh, mixes and where uh, our air and uh, lpg has mixed at stoichiometric proportion we get the flame boundary and uh, uh, based upon the flow rate of the fuel there is a particular height the diffusion flame has attained so the flame height actually depends upon the flow rate so that's what we got this so now let us see when when we saw the characteristics of a, a premixed flame so premixed flame is again same bunsen burner uh, we got a conical flame here conical flame which is actually was Uh, some uh, bright blue color bright blue color conical flame and uh, there was another uh, flame which is uh, non luminous we called non luminous uh, diffusion flame okay and this was the bright or luminous premixed flame okay so this is about the premix flame so overall the flame was shorter correct so let us try to compare the premix and the uh, in the same circular burner see so for example if i take a bunsen burner i have a nozzle which will inject fuel so fuel is injected and uh, there will be holes through which air entrains and a premix flame forms a premix flame forms okay so if i shut up this uh, holes for air entrainment only fuel comes out i get the diffusion flame when i allow the air to enter then i get a non uh, premix flame so non premix flame or jet flame is got by arresting the air flow into the mixing chamber of the bunsen burner so both the same burner can produce both pre non premix or the premix flame okay so now we let us see the characteristics what when we saw the premix flame uh, we saw a bright or luminous premix the uh, cone conical uh, flame which is short very short then um, again non luminous uh, blue color uh, uh, diffusion flame which is uh, there uh, above the premixed uh, flame so this is the characteristic okay shorter flames uh, normal like a slightly blue um, brightish blue color but uh, not uh, very uh, orange color and bright colors what we see in this so here you can see that a range of colors are present range of colors you can see some black color some um, uh, orange bright orange color then a very bright white color then again you can see uh, and in the in the base you can see some uh, slightly bluish colors and so on so different types of uh, colors are exhibited by the diffusion flame and they are luminous that means if you have a dark room and uh, if you use a uh, diffusion flame it will uh, lighten up the room but on the other hand if you take a premix flame it will not light up the room that means it will not be able to uh, be luminous basically so when you have a premix flame bright blue inner cone non luminous blue color in the outer mantle diffusion mantle were seen but in the diffusion flame like this you can see a range of colors including bright yellow or orange colors etc 
Okay, now near the burner rim, so this is the burner rim basically, the near the burner rim, you can see the burner rim, uh, non-luminous, uh, flame is non-luminous because we can see that uh, there the, the momentum is higher and the entrainment takes place and the proper mixing occurs just away from the uh, potential core. Potential core actually is a triangular region, so just away from the potential core you can see proper mixing of air which is coming in due to the high uh, momentum of this jet, uh, due to viscous effects, they are entrained and uh, there a proper mixing takes place. So once you go away, you now the, some products also leave. So uh, the air is not anymore very fresh. So uh, at this location, the base of the flame, normally the fresh air comes in and uh, pre-mixes so that uh, you get, uh, uh, it's not pre-mixes, it uh, comes and mixes and uh, you get a, a flame which is characterized by a non-luminous color. So now, when you go further upwards, Okay, suit inception and its growth will take place. Suit inception, normally all fuels, uh, so we can say, uh, so even in uh, methane, people have uh, talked about suit. So when you actually go for say uh, ethane, propane, etc., suit production will be there. If, uh, uh, but the thing is, whether there is a suit which is produced, which is oxidized or not within the flame, that is the question. But basically, the bright colors what you see here, these are all due to suit radiation only. So LPG basically has both saturated and unsaturated uh, hydrocarbons. So that actually leads to production of suit. So in this particular case, uh, suit inception and growth are in in inevitable and this is uh, going to be there. But the thing is, uh, the suit which are uh, incepted and uh, uh, formed inside are also oxidized within the flame. So that is the thing. So the bright emission that the bright color comes due to the suit radiation. The suit also can radiate the light. So the suit radiation is uh, the reason for the bright color of this particular uh, LPG flames. Okay, normally you can see that these are very uh, steady flames. Some uh, oscillation in the axial direction, slight oscillation in the radial direction also are seen basically. But uh, uh, they are in the laminar regime, they are not uh, a very high fluctuations, high degree of fluctuations will not be seen and the flames are uh, phenomenally very steady. Uh, some tip oscillations basically can be uh, observed uh, beyond a particular flow rate, tip oscillations can be found. So in the laminar regime, they are, the diffusion flames are quite steady, small flames, okay. So even in candle flames, you can see that the candle flames are phenomenally steady, but there are some also vigorous oscillations you can see in the candle flames also, okay. So similar to that, uh, that is a jet, jet diffusion flame only, that is a very uh, similar to a jet diffusion flame but uh, from a condensed fuel. But this is a jet diffusion flame coming from a gaseous fuel, okay. Now one more difference, so that means that you can see that uh, even um, if you take a premix flame, as I told you the suit etc will be very minimum there because you now you already provide a lot of oxidizer. So oxidizer may actually uh, uh, oxidizes the suit which is formed. Uh, basically it actually does, for suit to form you need precursors of suit. Uh, but if you have a premix flame this precursor formation itself will be very little. So the suit inception and uh, suit formation is normally very low in a premix flame. But in the case of uh, diffusion flame, uh, suit actually forms and uh, whether the suit is oxidized within the flame or not is the question. So for that, there is a flow rate which will determine that. When at a lower flow rate, basically the suit which is uh, incepted uh, and formed, it will be actually uh, oxidized within the flame itself. Okay, then the third important characteristic, uh, characteristic of the diffusion flame is it has a operating range which is actually quite high. When you compare to the premix flame, say if they take Bunsen burner, same Bunsen burner premix flame, uh, you have only a certain small range of velocity of the premixed uh, reactant which will give you a stable flame. Or else we have seen that there are two instabilities which can occur, flashback and lift off. But uh, uh, compared to that operating range for a premix flame, the operating range of a diffusion flame is much higher. So that's what in many applications these are preferred. Uh, not only that, the flashback uh, instability what we saw in the premix flame will not be present in the diffusion flame because only fuel is coming out. So the flame cannot go inside the fuel alone because it needs oxidizer. So the flashback uh, it cannot be observed in the diffu uh, diffusion flames. But in the premix flame that is another important instability what we get. 
However, the disadvantage of the diffusion flame is, as I told you, the soot formation. Uh, in some cases, when the flow rates of the fuels are very high uh, or, or uh, higher than a critical value, then you can see that the soot which is formed cannot be oxidized within the flame and will come out as smoke. Then CO. So, since actually uh, there is no premixing taking place, if any, uh, if the proper uh, entry of oxygen is not there or it is diluted by products or anything like that, then unburned hydrocarbons and CO can be present in the emissions. These are the disadvantages. Okay. The premix flames, you can see that these are all very low. All these three are very low in the uh, negligible in the premix flames. But in the uh, diffusion flames, we have to, prop if we do not properly control that, we will have we will end up with these uh, emissions, soot, CO, unburned hydrocarbons and so on. So, these are the comparison, okay, so comparison of this characteristic of diffusion flame as well as I am trying to compare these characteristics with the premix flames. Okay. Now, as I told you, uh, based upon the flow rate, uh, soot incepted may not be oxidized and the soot particle may leave the flame tip as smoke. When you go to the, go back to this, you can see that the tip is closed like this. So, you can see the flame tip is like this closed properly and uh, the bright yellow color which is uh, forming here and uh, the tip is not as bright as the yellow the bright color which is shown below the tip. So, that means the suit which is formed somewhere uh, at this location suit is formed the suit radiates and within the length of the flame suit is oxidized also. So, that is uh, the, the, the flow rate of fuel is such that it may enter the entrain enough oxygen not only for its oxidation but also for soot oxidation so that the soot which is not escaping this. So, soot which is formed is well oxidized within the flame itself, but there is a, a particular flow rate where the soot uh, may not be oxidized. So, the soot particles may leave the flame tip and we will see smoke that is the, the carbonaceous particles will leave the flame itself. That means, the tip which is closed like this may open up okay. may open up and uh, you can see the uh, soot particles uh, smoke coming out of this. So, the tip may open up and the particles can come out. So, that means that the uh, soot particles are not the three there are favorable conditions required for oxidation not only oxygen uh, presence, basically some radicals OH etc is required plus temperature should be suitable for oxidation to be occurring and so on. So, if the, uh, the scenario is not enough for the suit oxygen to be completed within the flame, then the flame may open up, tip may open up and the, uh, the suit particles can leave and that is called smoke. Okay, so, these are actually important uh, disadvantages, this, these two uh, soot formation, CO formation, unburned hydrocarbons, etc., are the disadvantages. And also, when you increase the flow rate, you can see this. When you increase the flow rate, I want to operate the laminar regime. So, as the in the laminar regime, as I increase the flow rate, you can see the laminar flame height is growing. So, we have to have some control of that also. If, if uh, so in some cases, the, the flame height mean, uh, cannot be more than a particular value. Uh, but we need uh, to produce so much power, so I need to supply uh, more uh, fuel and so on. So, the, we have to see lot of controls for this. So, other uh, disadvantage is the uh, control of these flames, we have to uh, take care of it properly. But the main advantage is basically it is safer than the premix flame because the flashback is not there, then the operating range is much much wider than the premix flame. So, that is these are the two main advantages. Now, as we saw the structure of a premix flame we will now see the structure of a diffusion flame. Okay. So, uh, structure of a premium flame, we know that the temperature, unburned reaction temperature increases to the flame temperature. So, in the in this is the reaction zone basically uh, and uh, this is the premix zone what we call. So, premix and reaction zones and uh, the reactants are consumed like this, reactants and products are formed, uh, heat release. So, this was the uh, typical structure of a premix flame. So, across the flame when I try to plot the profiles of temperature, mass reaction, etcetera, I get the pro, uh, structure. Similar to this, across the flame, see if you see this, uh, as I told you, uh, this is the center, center of the center line, center line of the uh, flame. And uh, from the center line, 
uh, the radial directions I try to plot the profiles of the quantities like say temperature here then uh, see mass fractions of say oxidizer product etc. So, here fuel products oxidizer etc. I am trying to plot uh, in the radial direction at given and two actual locations I have selected here across the flame. So, for example, uh, the flame sheet this is phi equal to 1 where indicate what it indicates the locations where fuel and oxidizer have mixed in stoichiometric proportions. So, phi equal to 1 line contour line of phi equal to 1. This indicates the locus of all the points where the fuel and oxidizer has mixed in stoichiometric proportions and this will be the flame zone. Okay, how it is going to be flame zone we will see. So, now what we have shown in this figure is the structure of methane jet diffusion flame. So, methane is coming out of the uh, nozzle or here is the circular pipe basically sorry circular pipe uh, of a radius uh, r. Now, this is numerically predicted profile okay? and uh, we have used say finite rate chemistry that means we have used some uh, uh, chemical kinetic mechanism. So, that uh, actually this, uh, this is a phi equal to 1 contour where the reaction zone may have only finite uh, thickness some finite thickness it will have. So, when you have when the reaction rates are infinitely fast then the uh, thickness of the flame will tend to 0, but here we have used finite rate chemistry that means we have some thickness for the reaction zone that we have to keep in mind. So, I am emphasizing that point. So, on the other hand instead of doing this numerical prediction using finite rate chemistry, I can also do the evaluation of structure of a diffusion flame by simple chemical reacting system which we saw in the governing equations, where we got rid of all the uh, reaction rate terms by using conserved scalars. Okay? And uh, we, got, we uh, wrote the equation in terms of mixture fraction and we retrieve the variables back from calculation of the mixture fraction. So, by using that we will get, but what we assume that constant properties etc we assume that and we got the structure, that there also we can get a structure and a reasonable value for a flame height. So, these are the two things mainly I am interested in the, uh, the flame extents, right? the height of the flame and the radius of the flame at every uh, uh, actual location and the height of the flame. This is our flame extents which is what uh, we are interested in. The flame height is very important and the flame radius also is important. So, when you try to get this we can either go for this type of finite rate chemistry prediction or without using chemistry go for SCR a simple chemical chemically reacting uh, system. Okay? So, uh, that we will use basically if you see in our uh, analysis of the non reactive jets we have got this uh, profile for OF. Okay, profile of is this. So now I want to uh, find the flame height. I'll just set psi equal to zero there and uh, find the uh, location of uh, x where y f is equal to y f stoichiometry. I'll get the flame height. Or if I take the radial profiles of y f everywhere and try to uh, get the radial locations of y f uh, equal to y f st, then I can plot this psi equal to one contour. So this is what this. So even by the non reactive flow and you can get this uh, phi equal to 1 contour. So, where there is no reaction at all. So, but that is not important for us because where what we assume there is uh, the, the process which is going to control the flame location is only the transport processes like diffusion in the radial direction, convection in the actual direction plus uh, when the fuel and oxidizer mix at stoichiometric proportions instantaneously reaction will occur. The reaction is infinitely fast. That means, the flame will be very thin zone. So, that is the way you can analyze this. There also you can get structures basically what we have put here. So, that you, so how would calculate temperature from that? Again use the mixture fraction type of approach to get the temperature. So, that is also uh, possible. So, to just to get the flame height and the flame radius, I can just do the non-reactive uh, analysis. The only thing is if they only it should be non premix flame that is the fuel alone comes out and our mixtures wherever they mix in the stoichiometric proportion the combustion will be complete instantaneously and we get the thin flame zone like this. Okay? So, now we will uh, see some, cons uh, some uh, discussions on the structure of the flame. 
ஓகே நோ ஐ டோல்ட் யூ ஸ்டாக்கோமெட்ரிக் ப்ரொபோஷன் மிக்சிங் பிட்வீன் தி ஃபியூ அண்ட் ஆர்ட் டேக்ஸ் பிளேஸ் தட் இஸ் தி இக்னிஷன் அப்பான் இக்னிஷன் ஃப்ளேம் ஜோன் ஃபார்ம்ஸ் தர் ஸோ தட் இஸ் இண்டிகேட் பை தி ஃபி ஈக்குவல் டு ஒன் தட் இஸ் தி ஸ்டாக்கோமெட்ரிக் கண்ட்ரோல் லைன் ஸோ தட் இஸ் ஒன் ஆஃப் தி இம்பார்ட்டன் பாயிண்ட் வி ஷுட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் தென் த ஃப்ளேம் லெங்க் எல் எஃப் இஸ் தி ஆக்சியல் டிஸ்டன்ஸ் மெஷர்ட் ஃப்ரம் த பர்னர் எக்ஸர்ட் டு த டிப் of the contour line of y equal to 1 so going back from this point to this point this will be the flame length okay so that is the flame length so now flame length flame radius is also from uh, r equal to 0 you can go to any location where y equal to 1 is appearing so that will be flame radius that also varies with x like this so that also we can c so uh, radial profiles of temperature and species mass fraction describe the structure across the flame correct radial profiles go across the flame so that will uh, define the structure of the flame as i told you so now uh, in this particular case we have plotted radial uh, the radial profiles at two axial locations one slightly away from the burner exit or the nozzle exit uh, which is there x equal to 1 i will say or x1 and uh, one more at x equal to x yeah i will say that is the end of the flame or flame length l of i will say l of okay so these are the two locations the structure is plotted please understand in the in the case of premix flame only one structure is enough because uh, uniform flame is there uh, unburned side and burned side the unburned gas from the comes from the left and uh, burned gas leave from the right and so on so there we get only one perfect but here since it's actually a two dimensional uh, variation here we can we can see that the profile it will vary uh, as per the location what we choose so uh, but anywhere inside what we are trying to do here is anywhere inside the flame and uh, at the flame tip that's what we are so the flame at the flame tip there is a difference in the profile anywhere inside the flame tip the profiles magnitude of the maximum value and uh, extent of the radial locations etc may change but the similarity will be still there within the flame but at the flame tip we will get a different uh, profile so we have chosen one uh, location axial location within the flame and one axial location which is at the flame tip okay so we will discuss the uh, structure in these two locations so radial profiles of these variables have been drawn at two axial locations uh, one is within the flame above the burner exit and another one at the flame tip okay now at the lower section that is within the flame okay now we will see the description of what how the profile varies temperature increases from around 600 kelvin at the axis you can see this temperature in this particular location is 600 degrees and it increases to a maximum of uh, say around 2000 degrees at the flame location then decreases asymptotically away so when i try to plot in this direction i am getting this so you can see that uh, here the temperature is 300 kelvin and uh, when you go up from the flame the the heat is uh, transferred to the axis so that you can see the axis at the axis itself temperature has reached 600 kelvin and uh, from that it increases to the flame temperature which is say 1850 kelvin around 2000 and uh, then uh, uh, the location at which it attains this is the flame radius or f so so this location at which so that will be the r of by r that is the location at which phi equal to 1 so this is location at which phi equal to 1 also so uh, at the location of phi equal to 1 you get r r of by r and the maximum temperature is attained there which is uh, very close to 2000 kelvin and after that okay after that temperature decreases rapidly and we think is in it is asymptotically approaches so that's a decrease and also asymptotically approaches so there's a non linear variation so rapid decrease and asymptotically reaching the ambient temperature farther away so this is the typical profile anywhere within the flame you can plot this below the flame tip uh, anywhere if you plot some type of this will be here maybe if you go to this location you will see a higher temperature at the central itself and uh, at this very shorter at the lower value of r you will get get the peak 
then it goes again. But the similarity of the profile is still conserved. Like the values of the center line temperature, maximum temperature, location of the radial, radial location of the maximum temperature, etc., may change within the uh, the flame height wherever you try to plot. But the similarity will be there. From a low value at the lower value at the axis, it increases to the maximum value at the flame uh, location, which is indicated by phi equal to one, and then it decreases uh, rapidly and asymptotically reaches the ambient temperature. That is the way the profile varies within the flame. Okay. So that is what is described here. Now, the other things. So let us take fuel. Fuel from the uh, jet side, that is the core of the jet, that is axis side, diffuses towards the flame zone. In the radial direction, okay. So predominantly due to diffusion only. There is no convection in the reaction. So predominantly it's due to diffusion, and uh, it is due to both concentration gradient and temperature gradient. In mo most of the cases, we can neglect this, but uh, uh, to have uh, whatever be the effect of solar uh, uh, diffusion, we can add the uh, when you add the solar diffusion also into the species conservation. So when you do this, then you can see that here the inner zone. The inner zone fuel is uh, present only in this zone. When I say phi greater than one, I indicated phi greater than one here. So that fuel will be higher because the rich mixture. So from this point, so when I say phi greater than one, basically it is not actually phi because you can see when the flame forms, uh, yf is uh, still active in this. So y yf is going to be zero only at the flame tip. So yf is there. But I cannot say phi here because uh, uh, yf plus some products which are formed in the flame zone also will be there in the inner zone. Products. So the product plus fuel will be predominantly there, but not oxygen. So here in this zone, where, where I indicated phi greater than one, the product plus fuel will be present. Okay. Outside this flame, we will get oxygen plus products will be present. Fuel uh, will not cross the flame zone from the axis uh, outside the flame radius. Similarly, oxygen from the ambient cannot cross inside this. Very small amount of leak can happen, but not the uh, this 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 is controlled by the uh, mixing there. So wherever the appropriate uh, value of uh, uh, stoichiometric condition is reached, then flame zone is formed there. That means at the flame zone, the oxygen from the ambient has to be consumed. Fuel from the axis side has to be consumed. So then only this will be formed basically. So when I say phi equal to phi greater than one region, I say it is a mixture of product plus fuel. Okay, and then the outer side you will have oxygen plus products. So this is the way the things are distributed. So fuel cannot go to the outer side or oxygen cannot come to the fuel side. Okay, so that is now uh, given here. If you can see that fuel. At the exit, fuel mass fraction is one. At the exit of this uh, uh, pipe or the port or the nozzle, you will see the mass fraction will be one. But uh, I have taken a location which is uh, away from this, uh, so there some decay has happened. So now the mass fraction is say 0.55. From that, it decreases sharply to a zero value at the location here. The this is the same location. Uh, where the maximum temperature is attained, correct? So one, two, three, around three, or by capital R equal to three, you will get the fuel is completely consumed here. Okay, fuel is completely completely consumed here, and um, there the maximum temperature is formed. You can see that the product also are maximum at that point. Product. So that means products are formed at the flame zone. They are formed at the flame zone. Now. After the product form in the flame zone, they diffuse in both directions, in this direction and also in this direction. Now, based upon the concentration, already some products are formed at the base of the flame. So, these products are also convected away. Okay? So, the concentration of product at the axis is higher. So, th this diffusion is lower. Basically, this, you can see the, at the axis, the concentration of product is much higher when compared to zero concentration of the product in the uh, tending to or tending to or infinity, correct? So, within the uh, within the flame, there is accumulation of product plus fuel, uh, unburned fuel, 
and uh, outside you can see uh, it is going to infinity. So, asymptotically you can see this it is reaching the 0 value product is the 0 value formed at the location where the fuel is consumed, consumed oxygen also from the ambient comes and consumed here. So, at the location where the fuel and oxygen are consumed products are formed and the maximum values reach there the product diffuse both sides by radially diffusion basically it is dominated then uh, you can see the maximum temperature is attained at that location. So, this is the typical structure of the uh, diffusion flame in anywhere within the uh, uh, flame height you can draw this, but maximum values and the locations etcetera uh, where the maximum is uh, got those locations etcetera will be uh, different, but uh, the uh, they will be similar ok.